Hi, this is Peter again. A member of the forum sent me a personal message and was asking how I felt about the MFT3 because I travel with it so much. Uh, was I able to get the accuracy out of it that I desired? Was it easy to set up? Was it easy to adjust if necessary? So rather than trying to put all those things into words and maybe snap some photographs, I decided that I would go ahead and just show how to set it up, how I set it up. Now, Festool has their way of doing it, and you can go to the Festool Owners Group .com, uh, do searches there. You can go to Festool.tv, go to YouTube, and every you'll see basically the same variation uh, or, or several several different versions. But Festool does it a certain way. Uh, coming from the factory, there are stops mounted in the front and rear extrusions of the table that uh, will stop the mounting brackets. The rear one is hinged, the front one is not. Both are adjustable for the height of your workpiece. And coming from the factory, uh, mine was accurate, but uh, a while ago, I managed to get a set of Quaz dogs, so I decided to set my, my table up that way. And the difference between the Quaz dogs system or the one that I use and the Festool is that Festool does not necessarily use the holes in the accuracy of the grid to have anything to do with cutting. Um, the holes are there for positioning or clamping or holding. Um, with the system that, that Steve Adams uh, that we know is Quas, uh, came up with, that was designed really based on the MFT 1080. Uh, it was, <laughs> many, many users found that the accuracy of that changed over time. So Steve said, to heck with this, let's just go ahead and we've got a perfectly aligned grid. It should be accurate, it's CNC machined. And so he came up with the Quas dogs, which are little dogs, little cylinders, it fit in the holes, um, and it fits snugly, and they're machined well. So, that being said, the way I set mine up is so that my fence is parallel to the holes, and my rail is perpendicular to the fence and parallel to holes in this direction, in this plane. For those who've never seen an MFT, uh, I'll show you what the various parts are. Uh, it comes in the basics, basic configuration, which is just the table, the extrusion, and the legs. Uh, if you buy the full set, then it goes ahead and adds the front mounting bracket. Now, if you travel, I will warn you, or this is, this is what has happened to me, is there is a little nut back here. It is not fully trapped. That will vibrate loose in transit. And if you have a trailer like I do, it will be lost forever. Um, so uh, I happened to find out that in my locality, the the nuts will would not fit in the plastic, so I had to order some from Festool. I have several extras. I tighten it up a little bit. The problem with that is over time it will distort this little plastic piece. So if you see me struggling a little bit to slide it in the slots, that is why. It is not normal, it is just normal for me. So there's that. Then you have a rail. Uh, I leave mine attached to the rear hinged bracket uh, because I have several other rails. I don't need this for anything. So that's out of the way. Then we have what I'm gonna call the protractor head uh, that has indexed positions. It is adjustable, it holds the fence, it clamps to the rear extrusion. We have the fence. Uh, mine happens to have the optional war wound uh, caused by sliding it too far under my rail and then using the wonderful Festool TS55 to partially cut through. Uh, it actually has two mounting positions, the tall, correction, the tall and then the short. And then we have an out, I'm going to call it an outboard fence clamp. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this little knob, it actually has two mounting positions which will index this further away 
from the fence so that the lever, you get a little bit more play with the lever. I'd recommend you do that. If you take it apart, it's very simple to do. But there is a little spring in there. And watch out because it will go flying. And then all everything else I need is the square, the quads dogs, and the wrench from the TS55 for changing the blade. Uh, that is what fits into these. I am going to mess up my... Mine's accurate now. For my setup, I'm going to mess it up so it would be like you doing it the first time. Bear with me. I'll try and get this put together as quickly as I can so you don't have to suffer any longer than necessary. All right. We've slid it up to the stop. I use my head to hold the rail. I tighten the knob. Uh, for me setting this up, I'm going to let the rail just sit flat on the table. You would not cut in that position. Your workpiece would slide up. You change the elevation. Now I'm putting in the front rail bracket, sliding it to the stop, tightening it down. Now the front bracket, and I didn't show you, has a little prong that sticks up. There are that little protrusion ends up fitting inside the slot of the on the bottom of the guide rail. Press it down. Hold it all in place. Flip the little U-shaped plastic handle to tighten the elevation position. Now, if you've done it right, if you drop it, it will fall into place. Now, I'm not advising you to keep dropping it and beating up your rail, but I'm just showing you that that's what happens. Now, there is some play. Um, some people have more play than others. I have very little play there. It works for me. Is accurate enough. Let's get this out of the way. Talking about accuracy, I don't have an expensive square. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to assume that Festool manufactures these and this grid is square. I have an off the shelf framing square. I'm going to put it in here. Can I rock it? No, I can rock the table, I can rock the camera, but I cannot rock this. So, I'm going to go on the assumption I'm a lucky guy, and this is square there. You can try it on the inside, and it's good too. So, that works for me. Let's go ahead and put the protractor head on. And of course, you can be doing this a whole lot faster than I am, but I'm talking. It always slows me down. Put him back in place. Slide this in. As I said, of course, this would be slid further up under your rail if you're using it for cutting. Okay, there, that's the basics. We've got it mounted. I'm going to move this out of the way. But, first time you set it up, it's not going to match. Virtually guaranteed. So, using the wrench on top of the protractor head. There are two Allen head bolts. Loosen, I'm loosening them up so I can show you. Loosen the rear little knob. Okay? Now, if you press down on the little knob that's at the indexing head, that keeps it in the index, but you can see how much play we've got. So, Pretending that it is way out like that, what I would do is I would put in two, two dogs, loosen the slide mechanism, push it forward, so now we're here and here, tighten the slide, tighten this little knob, and then go ahead and tighten these. So what I've done is I have now created that this fence is parallel to the holes. And how do I test if it's accurate? Do that. Okay. There, that's kissing. Um, if you were going to use it in this position, if this was slid under here and you were ready to cut, for those people who say, I've got problems with deflection, here's what I did. Make sure this is all loosened up. Take the outboard clamp. I do it all in with one hand, and I don't have big hands. I hold everything. 
tighten this down. Now, can I move this? No, I can move the camera, I can move the table, and I'm not moving the fence. So, I'm pretty certain that, that I'll be able to work comfortably doing that. Is it repeatable? Sure it is. And this demo, I will not put this outboard clamp back on just for the time. We loosen that up. We loosen the slide back up. We move the slide. We put the dogs back in. We slide it forward. We tighten it. Just use the finger. There we go. All right. But what we haven't tested for is, is it accurate? Take my square, run it up against the fence. Does it rock? No. I rock the table. I feel comfortable right there. Now, you only have so much distance with the workpiece here. So if you're trying to maximize your cutting um, area on the table between that little protrusion and when you raise this up, you're creating a, an area between the front um, bracket and the fence. So this will give you the maximum distance. Um, the problem with it is, is you don't have enough extrusion back here to clamp this. So it is possible to get this. So what I would do uh, in that instance is I set my dogs up to that other hole, put it in place, put my square there, slide it forward and then go ahead and that gives me just enough room to put this outboard fence clamp. Once again, holding everything together, tightening, tightening, and now if I've done it right, I can't wiggle, but I can slide. And just doing this, am I accurate? Yes. So, that's how I do it. Now, once again, if you're going to be cutting, you're going to move your fence, you're going to elevate your rail, you're going to move this under, you're going to remember to not to take your fence too far over, uh, especially if you're doing a bevel cut, because you'll end up with one like mine. Anyway, I hope this helps, and enjoy the MFT, and try Quaz Dogs. And have a great day.